Well, welcome. It is absolutely on the hour, so it is time to get started. And I want to welcome you to today's webinar. It's a part of our Go Global webinar series. And today the subject is website localization for distributors. I want to welcome you all. I've been looking at the list and I can see the attendees. And I want to welcome our attendees from India, the United Kingdom, Germany, the United States, and Canada. So indeed, welcome you all, and I do hope that we will be doing our level best to ensure that you get real value from your time with us today. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce myself. I'm the guy on the bottom left-hand side of your screen there, John Worthington. Um, I am president here at IBD Partners, and I love our Go Global webinar series. Um, it's all about innovation. It's all about what's happening out there in the market. It's all about being up to speed and learning what's going on. I personally attend two or three webinars uh, by various experts per month. I set myself a rule book to do that. And um, there's nowhere more important in terms of our business that is going global um, with regards to distributors. And of course, that is the subject of today's webinar. It's all about asking the experts website localization for distributors. Today we have a lot of information all prepared for you. A lot of preparation has gone in today's webinar. And as always, we'll be trying to improve uh, webinars as we go forward. So there's lots of takeaways. So do stay until the end. And there is a survey at the end um, all about website localization for your distributors. I'm going to take one or two minutes for housekeeping. Um, so do know that this webinar is one in a series. It's all called Go Global, um, and you'll not be surprised to know our objective is to help you grow your business globally. Um, future webinars, uh, do have a look at our website. If you go to resources, um, you'll find um, the webinar listing there going forward four or five months now. We've got a great lineup going forward. Our Go Global webinar program also goes back almost two years. So we have an excellent catalog of recordings. If you would like to look at the backdated ones, webinars on demand. I repeat, just go to the website and look at webinars on demand. Um, this webinar will be approximately 40 minutes. Um, there will be a brief introduction by my colleague Susanna Hardy and the main presentation body by Pierre Van Hoer. Um, we will be handing over to Susanna in a few moments time. Um, but before then, I will be presenting um, both of them. Do know that we have four polls. Um, so these are participative. So please get your, get your hands on your mouses and get ready to participate when the polls come on. There will be question time at the end. We've reserved about 10 minutes time for various questions. And you can see the box on your screen, um, sort of uh, underneath polls, there's a plus sign which says questions. Please don't hesitate to get in there immediately and start uh, sending us your questions. And also there's a chat box, do use it. Um, at the end of the webinar, there is that survey, so do take a moment to um, give us your feedback. And finally, do know, you don't have to take any notes today. We will be providing you with a complete recording and slide deck that will be sent to you automatically on Friday. Um, so sit back, enjoy the webinar, and here we go. I'm going to take a second to introduce Susanna, Susanna Hardy. Susanna is, as it says on your screen, is Director for Europe. Uh, Susanna has lived and worked, has been educated uh, both in the US, that is in New York, and in Europe, in Germany, the United Kingdom, France, and Belgium. Well-traveled and very experienced business person. Um, Susanna has been doing this for over 20 years and has helped many, many companies grow their exports internationally through online services. Pierre, let me say a word or two about Pierre. Pierre is Belgium. Uh, Pierre speaks English, French, and Dutch, has a degree in engineering from ULB. Um, Pierre is our VP for Business Development. It is based over in Cleveland, uh, USA. I myself am talking to you today from London. Pierre knows the world of exports. Uh, experts. Uh, he's an expert in exports. Um, his experience enables him to talk with huge understanding of the challenges and the solutions um, that over time as exports and the surrounding technologies have evolved. Um, Pierre has worked for big corporations ranging from AB and B, as well as for mid-cap companies, and he is, as I said, a recognized expert. Um, back in 2013, uh, Pierre won the United States President's E Award for Excellence in Export Services. That was in recognition 
of his achievements in making significant contributions to the increase of U.S. exports. So a really sterling performance there, and um, I think that when you listen to him speaking later, you will certainly see that. Now I will just say one or two words about IBT Partners. IBT Partners, we are an international firm. IBT stands for International Business and Trade. Um, we're a private company. Um, we employ and are a team of online engineers and business developers. Uh, we have people in the US, in the United Kingdom, Germany, France, and China. Um, we've been in business uh, for over 15 years now, um, successfully providing online international services, helping companies go international, growing their exports. Um, IBT's core activity is helping companies grow their exports by building international localized websites. So that's what we do. And when those websites uh, have been created and exist, we provide all of that ongoing online marketing services in the target market. So our core message is always go global with website localization. And um, it certainly does sit alongside so well today's keynote subject, which is all about localization for distributors. So that is, those are your distributors. And historically, and it continues today, distributors are one of the main routes to export markets. Um, but actually, as we'll be presenting and arguing later, um, in many ways the world has changed. In today's digital world, the company's number one asset, your company's number one asset for marketing and sales is online. And we'd argue that for your use and use of your distributors, let's use online successfully. So IBT, we build localized websites and we provide country-specific digital marketing. So with that, I'm going to hand over to, actually no, there is another slide. I know that there's another slide. I would like to claim this slide as mine. Here you go, it's Woody Allen. Now this actually is one of Pierre's slides. We've been done, Pierre wanted this, and um, so I'm going to introduce it to you and say, well, Woody Allen, I love that phrase of his, 80% of success is just showing up. And I mean, it is actually totally brilliant. Um, so Woody Allen's view of the world is localized websites. Well, showing up means showing up in each market which you're exporting to. So if you're going to show up and trade with Germany, well, just you've got to be there. Um, and you've got to be there online. Similarly, of course, in today's market for China or Mexico or wherever you're exporting to, 80% of success is just showing up. Now, at the end of this um, webinar, there's a survey, and I'll be asking you if you agree, is Woody Allen the precursor of localized websites? So I'm now actually going to hand over to Susanna, and I'm going to thank you very much and hope that you enjoy the webinar. Thank you very much, John, and uh, welcome, everybody. This is Susanna speaking and presenting here. Um, a, a real pleasure to be with you all today. Um, just to give you a sort of a, a view on what we're going to be talking about, getting deep into this sort of thing, I'm going to get hand over to Pierre first of all to talk to a bit about distributors and the way that companies typically enact and transact with distributors and how things have changed in the last few years and what we're seeing is the major trends and shape of future uh, relationships with distributors. Um, for um, for B2B, but also for, for the service companies as well as manufacturers. Um, then John's going to be talking a bit more about the precise meaning of what we mean when we talk about website localization and give you some really pragmatic, practical help here and, and checklists and, and, and advice. And then I'm going to come back with some case studies and the best practices that we've found uh, in terms of distributor relationships for international markets. And finally, we have reserved a bit of time for, um, for, for your Q&A. And just to add to what John was saying, please, you know, put some questions in there and we will try and get back to, to all of you uh, as, we, as we go. And, then, and, and as John also said, sit back, relax, and uh, uh, enjoy, enjoy the presentation. So Pierre, if you're ready, I'm very happy to pass over to you to talk about relationships and expectations with distributors. Pierre? Thank you, Susanna, and thank you for the uh, people that um, are listening to us today. I wanted to start off by mentioning that um, I've been priv privileged to work with overseas distributors 
in the European Union, the Middle East, the Far East, for many, many years, many happy years, I must say. And um, I have witnessed changes lately, profound changes in the relationships between manufacturers and distributors. I'll talk about this uh, before that. I need to tell you that my basic assumption is that you are a U.S. mid-sized manufacturer, successful in the United States, and a lot of your business is through exports, through distributors. So that sets the stage for my comments. So when I say you, I mean uh, U.S. Uh, manufacturer. The quality of a relationship can be gauged by how well reciprocal expectations are met. So what I thought I'd do is I would uh, relate uh, a short story which describes how the expectations of a distributor has evolved over time and what caused these changes to be fueled by uh, different events that I will describe in a minute. So let's talk a little bit about the reasons why talking about uh, relationships and expectation is important. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce, about 70,000 U.S. manufacturers rely on overseas distributors and that translates into billions of dollars of exports. So it is, I think, essential to look at the way relationships and expectations between manufacturers and their distributors ha is evolving. The more so because the setup costs and the maintenance of your relationship with distributors is significant. There are, of course, as we all know, advantages and disadvantages in going to the distributor model to rely on exports. Um, and what I'm going to say that later on is that uh, localized websites erase many of the disadvantages of working with the distributors. Just as an example, the fact that you are far away from the market that you are uh, selling to and not in direct contact with the end user of your products is a significant disadvantage. You're losing uh, in the what I call the market intelligence for the markets that you're selling to. That is a significant disadvantage. The uh, motivation of distributors as we all know is Traditionally, they want innovative products, quality products. They need margins, which are comfortable, and also they require support. Support is really um, what is meant by relationships and expectations, and this is the object of my comments here. We can reduce the impact of disadvantages considerably again by using country specific websites and we'll have a look at that in a minute. So let's talk about the way it was. The way it was in the so-called good old times, it was more a relaxed type of relationship between distributors and manufacturers. Um, based on m marketing techniques that dated back to 1980. Um, there was distributor agreements, uh, sometimes just a letter would do, the nothing very formal, communications were by phone, um, basically the distributor would call his principal in the US when something went wrong, other than that there was not too much uh, communications between the manufacturers and the distributors. 
the sales operations were performed by means of uh, mail or fax. Um, order entry, shipping documents were sent again uh, through the snail mail or maybe fax and um, thus uh, many delays in the communication process occurred in that respect. The standard expectations of that time of the distributor, of course, was also uh, related to product quality, um, delivery times, payment terms. So all in all, it was kind of a relaxed, informal, not very performing system. Um, but then something happened. Boom! The internet showed up and everything changed at that time. The, and what I'm saying here is change is good. Change is good. The World Wide Web showed up in a very short time, the distributor was faced with getting his or her arms around the World Wide Web and the infinite variety of uh, functions that now are made possible by the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web, the Internet, and all the subsequent uh, devices, applications, and software that relate to that um, have become a very moving target and difficult, um, I'm going to say, a challenge to control, find out amongst all this variety what is useful to me, the distributor, how should I approach this, and what can my manufacturer help me in applying these tools now to the success of my company. And let me introduce to you the next slide. Thank you. What I meant to say also is that there are of course specialized services companies that help us understand, master, and control this infinite variety of e-based tools that are now available. And I'm listing here some of the obvious attributes of the service company that uh, you want to work with at this time. Next, please, Susanna. The trends in expectations that I see are as follows. And let me introduce here a short story in as follows. Assume that you are again a US manufacturer in the US successful and you have several distributors overseas including one in France which we are going to call Jean Dupont. Jean Dupont is, has been your distributor for quite some time now and uh, has not been performing very well. He's not been performing very well. Now, it happens that he has a curious mind and he has now become aware of this internet websites domain that he's not very familiar with. But anyway, um, on, the, on an impulse, he is uh, firing up his PC in his office. And by the way, as he does that, and he initiates a search using Google, what comes up on his PC is Google France you have to know that Google can locate your uh, site where you're calling from down to about 100 yards. And that is based on the IP, uh, which is the internet protocol number of your router. So if you're in France and you fire up Google search, Google France will come up. So 
he fires up Google France and then he starts to look at your French competitors' uh, websites. And he finds their, their technical details, their, their pricing, the services provide, and all this information is, of course, in French. And while Jean's Dupont English is okay, he says to himself, well, my English is okay, but my sales operations people are struggling a bit with English. It would be very helpful to have my U.S. partner, that's you, develop a site in French. This will make my internal sales organization more efficient and they can access your website in French uh, with the data, finding the data, technical data they need, uh, read the newsletters and blog in French, and generally enjoy the increase in brand visibility that you have now acquired in France. And more importantly than ever, Jean says, hey, and by the way, this is going to generate more leads that will come directly to me or to my U.S. principal, whichever, and which means more business. So as Woody Allen would say, 80% of success is being there. Being having a localized website in France is absolutely going to generate more leads. This is a proven fact over and over again. If you look at our uh, testimonials of our clients, you will see that uh, they actually do say that their business has increased significantly as soon as they have built localized websites. One more item here that I want to mention, and back to Jean Dupont, now that, that he has learned more about localized website. And uh, he says, well, maybe I should learn more about inbound marketing, which, by the way, is making some inroads in France. So again, he fires, fires up Google France and keys, keys in marketing rentrant, which is the French translation for inbound marketing. Up pops Amazon's landing page and uh, he is now in part of the Amazon's automated e-commerce system. And uh, he finds that there is a user-friendly registration form, a virtual shopping cart, uh, forms for billing, delivery, and he's made aware that his book is in stock or out of stock. He gets a choice of delivery of methods. He has asked, he is, he's even asked whether he would like uh, inside the box some kind of a message or a, um, a uh, gift uh, packaging and other items which you might be familiar with if you are buying from Amazon. And uh, Jean says, whoa, in France, in French, I'm sorry, what an incredible service. Why am I not getting this level of service from my UN, U.S. principal, which is you? Well, not all aspects of the e-commerce are applicable to every situation, as we all know. But John is starting to think about the future, and he says, well, I would like to, first of all, have direct access to my principles, that's you, inventory levels. And we can even agree together on how to manage the stock by, for instance, deciding the level of uh, safety stocks that are required. Uh, further, I would like total transparency on the order process, uh, order acknowledgement, uh, scheduling of production, uh, shipping transactions, tracking, all of this I would like to be informed of in a timely manner, meaning within a few minutes of each event occurring, which, which is not getting uh, this service right now. 
Um, he also is interested in um, this paperless transactions mode of operation called EDI, Electronic Data Interchange, which automates to a large, to a great extent, uh, the process of order taking, uh, billing, shipping documents, accounts receivable, and um, avoids replicating data from one system to another and thus avoiding a number of errors. Um, I would like to go to the next slide, please. Trends in expectations are fueled by increased competition from local companies. The loss of the advantage which we had for a long time in the exchange rates. The e-commerce services ju just mentioned. Amazon has raised the bar to a higher level than ever in terms of the services that a distributor or a manufacturer provides to his purchases. There is also a new phenomenon which is difficult to pronounce but it's called disintermediation. Disintermediation is simply said the um, removal of links in the supply chain. In th it's a pressure now for manufacturers to go direct B to C and uh, avoiding the requirements of having local distributors. That is a interesting situation and opportunity for US manufacturers given, given that certain conditions are met in terms of the nature of the goods that, being sh that is being shipped. Um, the logistics are very important of course in this respect. When I first started in the export business I thought that logistics was going to be a given whereas in fact uh, it's one of the um, most difficult and challenging um, phase of the sales operations that has to be considered. So looking ahead, if you give your overseas distributors uh, the benefits of the localized country specific websites, this is a proven method to outsmart both your US and local competitors. And will keep your distributors quote unquote delighted. Delighted is one of these new words that is now found in um, the uh, the uh, what, what I was going to say, the uh, current marketing methods like inbound marketing. It just means that um, you are providing your distributors with all the services that will make him more efficient, increase their sales and your sales, and generally strengthen the relationships with his U.S. manufacturers. Thank you very much. And now um, on to John. Well, Pierre, want... absolutely. Pierre, first of all, thank you for that. Um, very practical, very concrete, very solid examples. Um, thank you. I love that French story. And I think now we can go with our first poll, which should sit so very well with this. So I'm launching a poll. Please, everybody, are you ready? Get here you go. I'm launching it. Do you actively manage your international distributor network? So there you go. Um, your network's for international markets, uh, yes, but only some export markets, no thinking about it. Um, let me give you feedback, feedback, live feedback, 44% are saying yes, 0% are saying no for the export markets, 48% are saying no, and 20% are saying 
thinking about it. Well, thank you very much for that poll. I'm going to close that poll now. And these results, of course, will be made available to you on Friday when you get this information back. There we go. I'm closing that. And then we're moving on to the next slide. Um, uh, this will be me talking for a few minutes on what we mean um, and what Pierre was referring to and how we can delight effectively distributors. Um, localize websites for, for your business. So website localization and target markets. There you go. Um, there's a screen there with a couple of flags meant to represent um, countries, meant to, meant to represent your target markets. And so specifically we're talking about country, specific websites and international marketing. As Pierre was talking about, some of these are transactional. They are not necessarily transactional. They can be e-commerce enabled, enabling you to do that work and functionality with your distributors or not. But nevertheless, as Woody Adam would say, they are there. Um, it's presence. It's having your online presence. And as we move to the next slide, we'll be able to talk about why we're doing this. So as Pierre was elucidating in the, in the story of um, a French uh, uh, partner, this is applicable to all of your target markets that you are seeking to do business in. Um, first of all, and most notable, is let's talk about brand. Um, it's called awareness. Um, your brand needs to be known. It needs to be understood. People need to be aware of your brand in your target markets. To be aware in one market is fine. To be aware in five is great. But um, when you are an in international exporter into many markets, create that brand awareness. Today's markets, it's all about credibility and creating trust. People buy from, want to do business from people that they know and that they trust. Um, and Pierre gave some very good solid examples of people the world before it went bang, before we had the internet. Today, a really the best number one way to get there is to use your website, or use your websites to develop your brand internationally. And that means online. And so when you're in market, let's take that example in France, or let's take Mexico. It's online in Mexico. Look at the traffic coming in. You can have traffic coming into each of your international sites, and you can monitor and manage that traffic. You can talk about engagement. It can generate leads. Uh, you can then do a number of what are many ways standard practice in, in your home market, market, but internationally. Let's talk about search engine optimization and social media and then add on this functionality in terms of e-commerce functionality and communities. And all of this is about what? It's all about business. As Pierre said, we're seeking to grow business. We're seeking to grow export and delight our clients so we can use these sites to get market knowledge. We can support distributors, help in that crucial logistic function, um, attending trade shows. Um, all of this today, there are online solutions. So today, let's use them for your distributors. Um, and that will bring us on to, actually, we have another um, web, uh, we have another um, uh, poll for you which I'm going to launch which is do you have localized websites for your distributors so come on there tell us all about it um, how about you how are your distributors um, 100% uh, 60 what have we got 25% are saying yes I have in my home country 25% uh, are saying yes for my home ex uh, for my export markets and 40% are saying no um, and 15% are saying that they're thinking about it well, thank you very much indeed. There's clearly a lot of good work to be done, both at home and in export markets, um, as we do that. I'm closing the poll and thanking you. So as we move to the next one, let's just talk a few minutes about website localization. Um, what do we mean about it? Um, it's all about, for example, the terminology on websites. Um, it's all about having local case studies in units of measurement so that um, you can actually easily do business with your um, target markets. In today's market, a lot of people talk about as well the user experience, UX. So user experience, a user who has difficulty reading your website because he doesn't understand, she doesn't understand the language, let alone finding it, 
um, will not necessarily be an easy client to acquire or support and develop. Uh, country specific design, well there you go, those are two examples. Um, I think on the left we know where we might be, there's some, some twisty, bendy road perhaps uh, in, could that be Scotland? Um, and uh, on our right we're on Route 66. So design, local design, so that people understand the design and multilingual navigation. We have a recommendation to always use um, the local language. Um, that is uh, probably considered best practice along with flags. Um, it says a lot about your business when you do this. Um, people come to your site and they understand that you're an international business. Uh, the next page, please, as we move on to the next points about geolocation. Pierre was talking about that. IP addresses, they're well understood in today's market. And in today's market, we can um, then use IP addresses to manage um, sites that people go to. And of course, it all has to be mobile. We have all of the stats about mobile sites. And we know people are logging on and they're purchasing more and more. And they're doing their online due diligence and their online research through mobile devices. A quick word on content management systems, it simply is to say there are content management systems adapted for international, multinational. Um, there are many in the market, um, just make sure that you're using the right tools. And of course, hosting is another aspect. Um, the best websites that are locally hosted provide faster speed so that your user can be well served by the pages that they can come up and increasingly we're talking video so that people are watching video and it's SEO beneficial. And on to the next page, um, regulate, regulation. We flagged this up just as a, a checklist for you. Um, regulation today, uh, data privacy and such issues, um, traceability, ownership, um, uh, shall we say regulation is catching up with the World Wide Web um, and um, uh, the Wild West of the web um, is becoming more and more regulated, do know about that. A word on domains, um, it's uh, clear in, in the US uh, generally companies are .com, in the United Kingdom for example we use .co.uk, in France it's .fr. Um, if you look along the bottom rung there, .se, .ru, .es, .pl, .cz, well, that's a guessing game. Um, I'm going to leave it up to you to, to tell me which ones they are, and then um, you'll be have the answers on Friday. Um, social media, of course, let's use social media. There are same platforms, but this is a great way to support and develop your distributors. Okay, and with that, um, we do actually have a, another um, poll, and this one is actually related to number eight there. I'm launching this, which is about, here you go, are your international websites digitally compliant? Now, sometimes um, it's not exactly clear what people mean by that, but in today's market, um, at the moment, it's excellent. We're saying 75% are not sure, 20% are saying yes, will it become prime? Um, it's actually, there are many, many organizations that can help in this, um, but digital compliance is extremely important um, and increasingly so. So I'm going to close that down with 70% of you saying not sure. Um, well, there are very easy solutions to that. I'm closing that poll. Um, and on to the next um, slide about search engines. So. Um, Indeed, um, going back to uh, um, Pierre's example again, um, Google. Google is is one um, search engine amongst many, and um, it depends really where you are. So knowing about search engines, knowing about search engines is all about making sure that your website, your local website, is well understood and well visible to your target audiences. So there's a whole issue on search engines there and um, that will be available to you to uh, dive down into on Friday. And next, we're going to just talk about different markets in terms of the same languages, different countries. Um, the US versus the UK, um, in terms of search engines, there are algorithm differences. Um, there are some very agrarious examples which are kind of fun. Um, if we had more time to dive into them. Um, and here are some examples of different languages, different countries, um, same countries, and different devices. Um, to move on, um, I love this example. This really was me putting this one up, saying to you, please do be aware. 
Um, we often, as a company, IBT, we work by benchmarking. Um, we run a number of benchmarks to see which companies are doing website localization well and international support of their distributors well. Um, a, a company that does direct-to-market and online practice, perhaps the best in the market could be Apple. You can see how many country-specific websites they, they have. Um, we last were told that they have 108 country-specific websites. Um, they're very, very transactional and very, very adapted for each market. Not everybody has the deep pockets of Apple, but just to bring it up to you as an example, um, there are companies that are leading the way in website localization, and certainly Apple is one. Do go and check it out. Look at Apple and Apple International. It's fascinating what they've done and how they're doing it. So with that, I think that I'm moving to a close, and I'm going to hand to Susanna for the next slide. Thank you very much, John. Um, I'm just going to be pretty rapid now because I think we're running out of time. But uh, I wanted to give you some, some best practices, some case studies, uh, some examples of some of the things that we're doing and some of our clients are doing internationally with websites, particularly about distributors. And one of the first things that a client comes to us with in terms of if he's got uh, objectives about distributors is, you know, how do I recruit more distributors? Um, you know, there's the, there's, there's the tried and true ways of, you know, walking around those trade shows and, 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 and things like that and, and getting out your roller decks. But, uh, you know, a localized website could also be a fantastic way of getting a regular flow of, of uh, engaged uh, um, distributors. And we have found consistently that the very best distributors are the ones that find you. So just, you know, the, the golden rule is make yourself extremely visible, uh, make yourself look attractive. And we have many case studies where, on our, you can see on our website, so, you know, many case studies where you have companies who have started up a localized website in a target export market. And one of the first things they do is they put on their website in the local language, become a distributor. And you've probably all got that on your domestic homepage in the U.S., it works just as well in the export markets. Arguably, it works even better because it shows the distributor from the start that you've got serious commitment, that you know, you've know you got a local website and you're really committed to supporting that distributor. So you know, one of the first things is get your website up and ready, you know, optimize it as, as John was talking, and then put a Become a Distributor page on it and, and find the distributors via social media, via SEOing your, your website, and, um, and you'll find that you will have a, a, very strong, a very strong feedback from potential new people. John, I think now is our final poll. Absolutely. Here we go. I'm launching it, and it sits so well. It's all about uses of, of websites. So here we go. Launch. Um, do you use your localized websites for your distributors in terms of recruitment? Are you recruiting through it? Are you marketing and supporting your distributors? Um, are you providing sales support? Are you driving traffic through local websites um, to them or transactions? So 100%, uh, 50, 50%, um, gosh, it's moving so fast here, it's difficult to keep up, but 20% um, are saying that they're recruiting through it, 70% are saying marketing support, 60% sales support, 60% drive traffic, and 80 are doing transactions. That's great. That's really useful. Thank you so much, and bravo to you. Um, I'm closing that poll. Back to you, Susanna. Thanks very much, John. The next thing I really wanted to talk about, the next thing that a lot of our clients come to us about is, okay, I've got these distributors in the market, and I need to support them. And uh, in the past, we did these, as, as Pierre was mentioning, we did these like, you know, we did these huge brochures or we'd give them some money to do a trade show. And increasingly, they need to have 24-7 uh, support, which means the internet and which means a really strong, good, visible presence in the local market, which can compete against the local competitors, the Amazons of the world, the WeChats of the world in the local market. And again, this is this is something that we've we've, we've worked on with a lot of clients, really to 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 have um, uh, this this support, which allows them to have an equal marketing support also across markets, so that it's another way 
um, also of really seeing who's pulling ahead in terms of your various distributors so that you can actually say, well, we're all giving you the same support now. So who's, who's, who's using, using it best, who's, who's pulling ahead with that, and who's not? Um, one of the interesting things about that, and we'll come on to this in the next slide, is also what that means in terms of your, of, in terms of your brand. Because the more support you're giving your distributor through an online presence, the more you're controlling your brand. And that's really what I want to talk about here. Um, it, it comes, it's something that we talk about a lot, but in fact our clients very often have their first priority is sort of lead generation or supporting their distributors or finding distributors. And, uh, um, uh, but they're all, I think, unanimously uh, uh, delighted when they, uh, to use Pierre's word, when they discover that in fact part of having, um, you know, a major part and aspect of having your own websites is that you control, own, manage your own brand. And it's really important, I think, that companies realize that your distributor should not have and control and own your domain name. You know, if your name is IBT Partners, you need to own IBT Partners wherever it is in the market. Don't hand that to your distributor. Um, that's, that's handing your distributor your brand. So if you have localized websites that are well supported in terms of marketing documentation, and, and is well supported in terms of finding distributors, then you own and develop the brand awareness. And that is a, is a fantastic um, asset to have over long term. It allows the local credibility and trust that is such an important part of the buying process. So that's one of the things that I think is, is, is so important. The more, the more marketing support you give your local distributor via your website, the more actually you're also owning and developing your brand. Um, that's particularly, by the way, in terms of social media. And one of the things that I wanted to bring out as well is how much social media is uh, driving um, a lot of a lot of this. And you can see that in some of the the, the sort of more cutting edge or the next generation of distributor relationships. And something that Pierre alluded to very briefly. Something we're starting to see increasingly, though, is uh, companies who say, well, I have a very niche product, and increasingly, I really want my distributors, you know, they've sort of gone full circle, I really want my distributors to act as order fulfillment and after-sales services in market. And I want to own my brand. I want to own uh, my, my marketing. I want to own my websites and use my distributors to do the, the, the last leg of the journey. And most importantly, I want to have visibility and transparency on the end client. So what we're finding also, and this is the subject of another webinar um, uh, later on in the year, um, what we're finding increasingly is also companies, uh, particularly ones who are very niche products, launching their own customized e-commerce platforms. And that, I think, is a very uh, interesting and, and, and uh, a novel way of looking at a business uh, for overseas and for uh, international business flows. So I think that's a, that's worth having a, a thought. I think about um, when you're looking at sort of business models longer term. Um, is that applicable to your company? So with that, really, I think I've, I've sort of rushed through mine as well. I'll try and give you a little bit of time for questions. And John, I hope that there is uh, there have been some questions that have come in. Um, if we have any questions now. Yeah, actually, there are a lot in the question box. I really like them. Um, we're not going to be able to answer all. We're going to do two, three, or four max. Um, but please, um, I'm looking at some of these now. Do know that we'll get back to you. We will answer your questions, um, even if we have to come back to you one by one over the, uh, the days ahead. Um, Susanna, I'll grab one for you. Um, a U.S. company says, I've got a distributor for Germany. Um, can he promote me online? What are your thoughts? Uh, uh, that's that's a great question. We get that question pretty regularly, really, and, and you know it's 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 a fantastic question because most companies, many companies, delegate uh, the promotion of their of their businesses to their distributors and rely on the distributors for their marketing, their in market, their their local marketing efforts, and that's that that makes total sense. That's totally normal. After all, your distributor is supposed to know the local market, and uh, that's why you appointed him. But um, a lot of distributors also have 
could have conflicts of interest. They could have their own agendas, and maybe their websites promote your competitors. So I think you have to be very careful about what you're doing there with your distributor and think about your own marketing as well so that your, your own website promotes your business, owns your brand, and, and spearheads it, and you're providing your distributor with what to say rather than he's calling the shots. So I would say stay in control. Thank you, John. Yeah, I like it. That, that, that does absolutely make yeah, total sense. And Pierre, here you go. This will be a nice one for you. Um, I, this is a company based in Michigan, and they're saying they've got 20 distributors uh, around the world internationally in, in different countries, uh, single distributors for, for markets. And uh, if they were to go down the route of website localization, where would they start? Well, they would start with um, sorting out their markets by priorities and um, obviously they know where their most promising markets are located and they would identify these countries and they would proceed um, let me backpedal a little bit it depends a great deal on what type of uh, product or services they offer whether it's a innovative product or service they want to move fast because as we know pretty soon uh, if they have not established themselves as the prime brand for this particular innovative device other people are going to copy so if, the, if we are talking about an innovative product or service we have to move fast and therefore I would target initially three or four perhaps five countries and set up localized websites for these four or five countries. If the product is more of a, I would say, along the lines of its life expectant expectancy, it depends then on how much funds are available and what your sales objectives are. Uh, you may want to start with one or two countries call if you are of the cautious type and if you can afford to uh, see some of the sales uh, not ramping up as fast as you want to. Pierre, thank you. I think that's a great um, uh, short reply. We can get back to you with more of that um, uh, back there in Michigan. Susanna, how about, um, what about my local distributor's website? Um, uh, should I feature my company there? Um, thank you, John. Uh, yes. Uh, it's 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 similar to the other one in the sense that uh, uh, without a doubt we should um, expand and 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 put yourself on your local distributor too. But the point is, uh, I think as I was saying before, the the point is to have make sure that there's no conflict of interest with your local distributor, and um, um, you know your local distributor could also be using uh, you know displaying your competitors' uh, products or or near competitors' products. Um, uh, it's a, what we do very often is we'll have companies who work in tandem with their distributor for content or for helping or helping in in in, in specific marketing events. Um, uh, but we'll feed their their distributor uh, content to put on their website. So really, it becomes a joint effort in that sense. I hope that helped, John. I think so. Well, well no. Well, um, I think, unfortunately, it's time we do have to close down on questions. There are questions I can see about local language options. Do know what will get back to you. Um, there are several about domains. We will get back to you in the very near future. I think, unfortunately, that we have to um, close that now. What I'd like to do, this is very much for um, Pierre and, of course, and Susanna. Thank you very much on behalf of the audience. Here we go. Yes. I want to say Pierre, thank you, Susanna, thank you. That is tremendous. The crowd goes wild. Thank you. A lot of that clapping <laughs> there. Um, no, there I think go. it's been a great webinar, and we've been able to cover a lot of subjects. Um, I want to thank you all for attending. I want to remind you that this is one in a series. Um, so do know you can indeed join us again next week. Um, the Go Global webinar.
uh, series, we are actually um, with the American National Marine Manufacturers Association down in Miami um, running a webinar specifically for marine manufacturers with lots of case studies about success stories of how marine manufacturers have gone internationally um, with website localization. So that is just next week, so do join us then. Um, when I shut this down, please um, come and have a look at our survey. If you want to um, answer the Woody Allen question, well, it's question number one on the survey, so do respond. I want to read your answers. Is Woody Allen really the website localization hero with 80% um, of, of getting? It's all about being there. Um, do know again, we'll get you the slide recording on Friday. Just look at your email inbox and um, it will duly arrive. So again, I want to thank you all for joining us. I hope that you've enjoyed the webinar. I hope that you found uh, the information useful, Pierre's um, examples and, and Susanna's case studies. Um, I hope that you have lots of takeaways and um, I thank you again for joining us and have a great day. Goodbye. <laughs>